now. Going back to Lionel, who we got on the line with us now via video Skype. Lionel, what do you want to tackle first? The president and the unitary executive uh, or the fence jumpers and the fear the empire has? Now talking about checkpoints, miles around the White House. Uh, I mean, it's just, are, 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 are we becoming some type of weird Byzantine empire? Are we becoming? No, we have become. Let me go right back to the first part of the show, Alex, when you were overwhelmed by the stack of information that you had. I could hear it in your voice, and I hear it every day because I never miss a show. Where do I start? Where do I begin to delve in? Where do I start? Here's a question for you. Name one story, one issue, one story, one piece of fact or data that absolutely was reported perfectly by the mainstream media. Go ahead, take all the time you want. Other than fantasy football, the Kardashians, Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, NFL, aside from that, name one story in your stack that the mainstream media covered, even addressed. Take all the time in the world you want. Answer none. Why is that? Why? Because the you public's so dumbed down, the media is now so dumbed down, and the world's so complex. They have articles in the stack like, we don't know what Obamacare does, and we don't know if it's working, and we don't know what's happened, and we don't know what's happening on the border, and we don't know who we're fighting or who we're funding. It does seem like the disintegration of society. And I can hear it in your voice. You're saying, why aren't there people banging on your door saying, wait a minute. Where's that source? Why aren't people slamming their brakes on their cars saying, I want to know this? Let me talk about something, if you could, and I think you've talked about it before, this notion called hydro-imperialism. Now, one of the, the greatest, I think, gifts that we as sentient human beings and adults can give the world is to let them know something that perhaps maybe they didn't know. And you've got to know this, and I'm sure you do, that whenever the government says something, like Pilger's Law says, never believe anything until it's officially denied. Yes. When they say that we're going someplace for a particular reason, that's the cover. So I ask people, why do you think ISIS or ISIL or IS or FSA or Al Nusra Fund or uh, uh, AQI or IQA, uh, why are we changing the name? What do you think this is about? It's not about terrorism. In the first wave of imperialism, it was gold. Let's get, there's gold in them dar hills. Africa, uh, the British, second wave post-industrial oil made sense. Then the military began, began uh, to be the, the Luca Brasi, if you will, of the American oil and petroleum industries and, and the world. Third wave, rare earth metals, lithium, which by the way, Saudi Arabia or uh, Afghanistan is the Saudi Arabia of lithium. And then, now, here we go, water. Water. Finite, absolute. Everybody knows, and kids know, that the world is covered by two-thirds of it is covered by water. Well, that's salt water. Okay, if you're a fish. 2% is in ice and glaciers. 1% is available to us. That's potable, drinkable, accessible water. It will be the future currency. Absolutely. And Alex, it's so ingenious when you think about it. Let's go back to Muammar Gaddafi. And you said something, because I listen, Alex. I listen. I listen. Maybe I listen too much. I doubt that, but I listen. You said, isn't it funny how we change the names of things? Remember, it was Al-Qaeda. Not anymore. Then ISIS. Not anymore. Now ISIL. Then they go back and forth with ISIL, ISIL. It sounds like characters from Yentl. Yentl, uh -huh. ISIL. Like a Jackie Mason routine. Now, Gaddafi. How many ways can you spell Gaddafi? They even did that to us. Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong. Beijing, 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 Qatar, Qatar. When Gaddafi was overthrown, right when he was all of a sudden crazy, when he's wearing the Sergeant Pepper outfits, there is the, the Nubian sandstone aquifer underneath right there in Libya, maybe, Alex, maybe, just so happens to be the largest freshwater aquifer in the world, in the world. He has spent $25 billion to take Libya, which is 95, 96% basically desert, and make it arable, make it usable. Iraq, go back to biblical times, the Fertile Crescent, Tigris and Euphrates, the, the Garden of Eden, this was water. This, 
This is the currency now, in addition to the, the aforementioned. So when we go to a country and we decide to either invade or liberate or whatever particular partners you want to use, I'm a lawyer by profession and you have studied the law as well. You know that when you buy property, you have air rights. There's the old ad coelum doctrine. And you've got surface and mineral. Correct. But when you go to a country and you seize a country, either by invitation or by liberation or whatever particular uh, uh, fiction you use, who owns the water below? Second question, who does the water, I guess whom does the water belong to? Can you take water and put it on tankers like we used to use oil? You know, it gets into interesting issues, Alex. Sometimes when we go to different countries and we will invade or liberate or whatever you want to call it, we find antiquities. Sometimes you can't return to the Babylonians that which was the Babylonians. Water's a different story. So if we go to Iraq or Iran or Syria or wherever, and by the way, let me remind you that why Israel in its existential fight, existential, something we have not really realized yet, if the Golan Heights were to be either reassumed or taken back or whatever particular parlance you want to use by Syria, that's 40% of Israel's drinking water. Water is the currency of life. You can't get off of the water standard like we did the gold standard. There's no stopgap measures. It's not subject to speculation. You don't hold back on water. It is who we are. And Alex, hydro-imperialism is yet another subtext, another stratum, another layer to this labyrinth, this calculus that we in the world are involved in. So add that to your stat and add that to your worries. Well, and obviously you were alluding to the Great Lakes where I was reading years ago and I was in a documentary with Jesse Ventura about it, dealing with the fact that every month hundreds of super tankers come in from China and Japan and load up in the Great Lakes and just leave and they basically have a UN treaty to just take our water and now the Great Lakes are going down. Uh, the globalists have set the precedent where they just take the water if they want it. And what's also interesting, Alex, is when you tell somebody this, when you tell somebody and you freak them out, let me tell you the group of people that you're going to meet. First of all, there's a group who say, that's a conspiracy, a conspiracy theory. A conspiracy theory, as we've talked about a million times, means something I don't want to hear, something nefarious, something backward, something backroom, something illegal. Conspiracy theory to me means two guilty people conspiring. What we're doing sometimes, we're saying, no, this isn't a conspiracy. This is a fact. There, there's no conspiracy. That guy that's going into your neighbor's house, stealing his furniture, that's not a conspiracy. That's called burglary or robbery, depending upon the wood. So, so that, that word is the blanket for distraction. Second, people hate to be told something they should know. They hate to be told something they should know. And third, they hate when you shatter a myth. Let me give you my new favor. How many times have you heard that olive oil, extra virgin olive oil is great because of this thing called the Mediterranean diet? Wrong! It's fat! It's a con! Yet, so, this is just olive oil. We're not even talking about things that really bother. I brought this up the other day at a restaurant. People are running bread through pools of olive oil versus butter. And they say, well, it's the Mediterranean diet. I said, it's fat. No, I read, you didn't read. It's a, it's a myth that you misunderstood. It's a jingoism. Precisely. It's this thing that we are led to believe. I was watching a study the other day on new efforts to go out into the world, Alex, and look for life elsewhere. And I made the statement, why do we look at the life from other dimensions or planets that's landing here? Daily, ask Edgar Mitchell, ask Gordon Cooper, ask astronaut. What are you talking about? That's crazy. It's not crazy. What is sane anymore? I'm asking a very logical question. I don't believe in myth. I don't believe in folklore. I believe in fact. And it must infuriate you every day. Just tell us the truth. Tell the American people and the world that the reason why we in Saudi Arabia and British and English and American intel have concocted this boogeyman, the power of nightmares is a great 
BBC documentary said, the reason why we're giving you ISIL and ISIS is in order for you to look at this, be so horrified using the Hegelian dialectic to turn to us, beg us, please do something while we go in and we bomb a country. And, and by the way, why not ask Assad to basically, because I, I think he has a bigger beef against ISIS than we do. So I'm every day fighting this battle as to you, saying I'm looking for the truth. I'm not the enemy. I'm not a truther, a conspiracy person. I'm an American citizen who loves this country, who loves the rule of law, and I just want the truth. And I don't want any more of our brave men and women sent to beat the Luca Brasi, the enforcer for some asset stripping globalist financier jackal or whatever particular phrase you want to, to call it. And expanding on that, Lionel's our guest from Lionel Media. Dot com syndicated radio host, TV host in New York City, and a lawyer, prosecutor in his own right. I saw articles in the New York Times, the London Guardian, uh, just everywhere Newt Gingrich was saying, uh, all these elites were saying, the people are mad, they don't buy what we're doing anymore, there's a secessionist stuff going on, it's a crisis of the world order, and that, and that things are breaking down. This weekend I was at a meeting that had a lot of uh, big executives at it. They were all concerned about their families. They were looking at getting out of the country. And these things were high level. So the elite even realizes, it's not one monolith, obviously, that things are really screwed up. I don't think the general public, though, realizes it yet. Yeah. And when the bottom falls out of this untenable carrying capacity, whatever you want to call it, that we've reached, it is a time bomb. Uh, I mean, in your gut, what do you think is going to happen to civilization? Well, it, it, it's go well. I think what's going to happen is that you will see a complete first a devolution and then an ultimate destruction. How long that takes, you know, is anybody's guess. The thing that I am amazed by, Alex, is I'm in New York City right now, and downtown we had a group of people who I think deep down inside, deep down inside, really truly wanted to do something. And you know, Alex, anytime somebody gets off their duff and goes out in the street, whether it's a party. And whether they trash the place or don't clean up is another story. But whenever somebody stops tweeting or, or liking or posting or whatever, I'm, I'm heartened by that. And I wanted to go and ask these people, do you realize the con that you are being a part of? Just like people who believe, and no, nobody's suggesting that ISIS or ISIL is nothing to worry about. You're talking about the big global warming march that just happened and they trashed everything? Exactly. If I see a picture of that polar bear on an ice cube that was an iceberg, if I see that one more time, and I try to explain to somebody, do you understand that what is happening is that the people involved, the people who are there to make money on, on carbon trading, carbon exchange, carbon currency, Al Gore, Marie Strong, the usual cast of characters, people you've never really heard of or thought of, in order for them to, just like ISIS, just like anything else, to turn to the government, international organizations, the UN, please help us. What they have to do is say, do something, do anything. Hey, how would you like to do your fair share? Anything, anything to help that little baby polar bear. How, <laughs> how would you like to pay just a, a little bit? Yeah, just give Al Gore some money. Stay there, Lionel. I want to have you finish up on this. It's so ridiculous. Uh, we'll be back. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Are you happy doing your laundry with perfume detergents that irritate your skin? Are you happy washing your hands with stinking fragrances that give your skin rashes? Are you happy paying new, higher prices for smaller boxes? Find your happiness today with our one to four year supply of pure soaps or our one to two month sampler with bar soap, shampoo, laundry and dish soap at fivestarsoap.com. You deserve the best. Happiness is fivestarsoap.com.
Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. If you have candida overgrowth, just taking antifungal agents or starving yourself of sweets does not address the cause. Candida overgrowth is the result of a toxic, damaged, acidic, low oxygen, and inflamed tissue environment. The goal should be to remove the toxins, heal damaged tissues, restore healthy pH, eliminate inflammation, and feed beneficial bacteria. Previous usage of antibiotics or steroids or exposure to mercury or other toxins can damage many cells in the GI tract and body that make you prone to candida overgrowth. Removing toxins and healing tissues issues should be the goal. One World Whey is a whey protein food that supports detoxification, repair of tissues, and elimination of inflammation, healthy pH, and growth of beneficial bacteria. One World Whey is duly reformulated to be higher in protein and lower in carbohydrate. We believe One World Whey is an excellent food to support your efforts to create a healthy internal body environment. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorldWhey.com. I was sitting in traffic Listening to the radio George Strait was singing Seashores of old Mexico Lionel is our guest, LionelMedia.com I'm your host, Alex Jones with InfoWars.com here in my stack, um, in fact, I found the article. Here it is. This is out of Chicago Tribune. Google severs ties with conservative group over climate stance. And it just basically said they won't do business with them or operate with them or do, do web platforms with them. Because, quote, no one questions that global warming and climate change is real. Google is breaking ties with the American Legislative Exchange Council. A prominent network of uh, conservative state legislators that, among other projects, works to roll back laws that promote uh, solar and wind power, the company's chairman said Monday. The decision marks a major victory for the campaign for environmentalists. And it just goes on. Censoring, not letting gun shops have bank accounts or things like this is real draconian authoritarianism. You can say, well, Google's a private company, so is Microsoft. Let them do what they want. Okay, well, then if somebody doesn't like someone's sexual persuasion, are you not going to sell them a house and say, well, it's your free market right? The so-called left tried to pioneer, they claim, it was really Republicans, and I'm nonpartisan, that's just a fact, the Civil Rights Act and other things, so many issues where they're claiming they're trying to stop discrimination, but now there's a whole nother level of it. And they say in the article, climate change denial will not be tolerated. Like, like they're saying it's Holocaust denial or something. Uh, that's pretty scary because, Lionel, I don't think anybody's denying there are a lot of serious environmental issues. I'd rather have those dealt with and covered. But paying a carbon tax to a few hundred rich guys uh, and moving our jobs to India where they have you know dirty plants, or, or to Mexico, that all this is a scam. No one can debate that. See, but, you know, Alex, nobody is suggesting, and I'm not suggesting that there is not some cyclical sun, solar related uh, warming or climate change. That, that's not the issue. There yeah, is we're not even denying it. But if we wanted to, that's our right. Right. Well, there was a guy named Galileo. Who wanted to deny the notion of a geocentric universe as well? And look what happened to him. Look, here's my challenge to the carbon taxes. If Al Gore signed something that said, I hereby believe so much in the notion of change, of this 
anthropogenic, man-made. I'm going to sell my 10 mansions that are 20,000 square feet. <laughs> right, right. But I, I believe in this so much. I'm going to sign something disavowing any profit that I ever make from any kind of carbon exchange or, or carbon uh, 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 taxing. I, I am so, Then I'll listen to them. If you do that, if you tell me that this is truly a belief that you have, that we've got to, you know, uh, uh, reel in and, and, and tamp down this belching of carbon, fine, I'm with you. But until he does that, what this is, is to get people into a religion, that this is something that everybody believes in, to make even those who question it to seem Luddite and stupid. And by the way, this is a, the vehicle of the professional left. You know, this is a country, Alex, that used to believe in this thing called 1984. I got to mention this to you. The other day, again in New York and around the country, people are standing in lines waiting so they can now take a GPS, forget the carcinogenic aspect of it, but this thing that they would just carry in their pocket, now they're going to wear it as jewelry so that they can be tracked in a panopticon worldview 24-7 grid Next, we're going to forget the biometric. We're going to have RFID chips installed. And you and I are going to sit back and say, well, we told you so. And it's Google contact lenses. Lionel, awesome. I want to get back up for a full hour next week to cover the waterfront. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. You are Nightly News tonight, to 7 o'clock Central. I'll do some overdrive, take a few calls. Visit GCNLive.com today. Eric, Eric, and Terrence. I don't know about the others, but we're coming back to you.